Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the virtual breakfast sessions. My name is Larry Sashin, and, and we're doing something different today. We're doing coffee with Peter Herrero. Now, I don't know if you're if you've watched this show, you've seen Peter many times here, but we want to take an in-depth look at a man whose life I find very, very interesting. But before we do that, why don't we introduce our panel? Uh, Peter, why don't you introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. My name is Peter Herrero. I'm the founder and president of New York Hospitality Group. We are a tri-state, but mostly Westchester hospitality group, 90-year-old um, restaurant, Sam's of Gedney Way, 28-year-old barbecue catering company, 29-year-old off-premise catering company, Capeberry Events, I apologize, the Great American Barbecue Company, and as of nine years ago, we have semi-organic cafes in three hospitals. Uh, so we really are a local hospitality company. Thank you, Peter. Fred, say hello. Good morning, I'm Fred Clashman. I'm the editor and publisher of Total Food Service. Thrilled to be able to share um, some insight into Peter's world with our, with our readers and viewers. So thank you, Fred. Uh, why do I find Peter interesting? But by, by before, long before we did the virtual breakfast sessions, um, I got to know him as a friend, as an advisor, um, as a role model, actually. Uh, it, but it wasn't until I decided to do an interview with Peter for the virtual breakfast sessions that I found out some of the things that make this man tick. Uh, just an example, I don't know if anybody read my description, but at 15, he was a dishwasher. At 24, he owned a restaurant. At 26, he started a hospitality group. Meanwhile, he marries a beautiful, intelligent, hardworking woman who can not only help him raise a family, but actually help him run the hospitality group. Now, this may sound like the American dream, this may sound like a Hollywood script, but it's not. It's Peter's life. So on that note, you ever get a, did you ever get a warm up like that before, Peter? No, <laughs> uh, not at all. So show and, the people uh, how you walk on water. So Peter, please, <laughs> please tell us, you know, how do you get from dishwasher to owner of a multi-unit hospitality group and consulting firm it, it's funny when you say it that way um i love what i do i loved washing dishes when i was 15 years old i loved watching everything around me and and wanted to be part of it i would come in early or stay late just to help out and learn and it's amazing in our industry if you're the guy or girl who's always there who never says no, everybody just pulls you in. You know, it's like a, a playground. You play nice with everybody. You let everybody take their turn. Everybody wins. Everybody wants to play with you, Larry. Everybody wants to show you around. They're protect, believe it or not, our clients are very protective of us. The first chef that I worked for when I was 15 years old was very protective of me. Once he found out that I was coming in a half hour early on my own, because the sous chef was always late. He was always a half hour to 45 minutes late. And it, it, you say it perfectly, Larry, and I, I, I've never heard it that way, but I loved it. The guy was jammed up. I showed up a half hour, what did I know? I was in high school, I was 15 years old. I wanted to learn, maybe I could make an extra buck and it was exciting. Do you wanna laugh? He laced into me, I will never forget. He called me an idiot. Why are you showing up a half hour, 20 minutes early? <laughs> You're not punching in. What the hell's your problem? What are you, stupid? I will tell you, brought me to tears. I went to my dishwashing machine and I went. Half hour later, the sous chef walks in. The chef screams to the owner, hey, we need another dishwasher. I'm like, did I just get fired? <laughs> I, I gotta be the only idiot that shows up early and gets fired. The guy looks at him and goes, why do we need another dishwasher? And he goes, well, I've had it with a sous chef. You know, I just need another dishwasher. Peter can help me out. I, the sous chef flips out. 
They go into the office, argue for about 15, 20 minutes. He comes out. The sous chef comes out five minutes later. It is dead quiet in the kitchen. Guy looks at me and goes, hey, now that you're getting paid for it, are you going to do the job or what? Okay. And it's funny you say that. Kind of sums up my entire career. I play nice with everybody. I'm hospitality. I have, for one, our biggest client, I learned cafe. I learned the semi-organic cafe business. We now have four cafes. But my client needed something in hospitality. I learned it. How bad can it be? Here, I gave them the plans to the Everyday Healthy Cafe nine years ago, and they were great. They're like, we don't want our food service company to run this. Get somebody to run it or put in a contract. How do, I don't know how to put a contract together for Montefiore hospitals. They, because I serve the greater good through hospitality, it's amazing the power we have in the hospitality industry. People want us in the room, by the way, not just because we serve coffee and biscotti and we're polite, but hospitality really is in every aspect of our life. So I just kept learning and learning and growing. And it's funny until we had kind of the prep conversation, Larry, I never thought my entire career is helping my clients or helping my supervisor or the boss and how they reward me because if you could do it and we weren't paying you when you were doing it in the clinch, eh, give it a try for 30, 60 or 90 days. If you can do the job, you got the job. That's my entire career summed up because we go, we're tri-state, but we really have six locations in White Plains. So it's Westchester County. It's, okay. I, I'm just curious. It sounds, it, sounds like it, be, it sounds like it begins with an attitude of that you're gonna be a lifelong learner and that every day you're gonna get up and learn something and you never know it all, you know, yeah. I know, I don't wanna be the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. I wanna to add to the greater good. And honestly, the more we learn in hospitality, how many, I walk into a room and I can quote certain things. Uh, and people look at me and go, did you read that book? Did you take that MBA course? No, actually, I still haven't graduated from college. Uh, I should have an associate's and a bachelor's in hotel and restaurant management and in business administration, but I got a really good job just before graduation and I took the job. So yeah, Fred, you said it perfectly, learning. So you know what, while you just took us there for a second, obviously we live in an industry that has some, has an academic end, things like the Culinary Institute, Johnson and Wales, um, and then a whole bunch of community college programs. What role does education play or not play as you look at where the industry is and where it's going? You know, it, it's really, and I have three kids, uh, 28, 31, and 32. I think we have to be careful in our industry. We are in a, such a special industry that you can work your way through, but it's still a lifelong of learning. Education, I truly believe, is a differential for us. I think it makes, you know, if you start your career here by being really smart, hardworking, education just opens up doors for you and teaches you how to think and teaches you certain concepts that, I'm sorry, hard work. It's so much harder doing, learning it through hard work than going to accounting, an accounting class, a communications, a marketing class. It, you know, you're already starting so much farther down. Now, with that said, mm -hmm. don't laugh. I still go to the CIA. I've taught uh, with Michael Roman years ago. We taught the, the buffet course. Um, it's amazing. You can actually teach at the local colleges if you're that good in one subject matter. And that's all you need to be. And I just need, Fred, you're a perfect example. I read the newspaper. I get to see what's out there. You know, when the client says what's new and exciting, you have to have the answer. Yep. So education is, is crucial, but I still think it's not the only path or the only right. highway right. It's a piece to of success. It. Yeah, but it does help. You got to know accounting. You got to know marketing yep. and learning it. The hard part, learning it 
you know, ad hoc, you're only learning one facet of it. And right. Which so facet just, really so works for? You just touched on marketing. I'd be interested to know how has marketing evolved since you since you began and used to run newspaper ads and now here we are on social media. Talk about how do you look at it? What role does it play? I am a fish out of water right now. I was, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I love marketing. To me, marketing is communications. I really dislike, I've taken Sandler sales courses, the boot camps. I take everything. Seriously, I take everything. But I have my spin on it, Fred. And what I mean by that is they say in sales, it's manipulation, you know, to get the client. I, I don't manipulate. It's research and discovery. What is going to wow you, Fred? I don't care about what's going on in the industry, but it's I'm speak. I'm listening to you and going to make your event or your hospitality a grand slam for you. Not for me. That's my job, not your job. Marketing, I got to tell you, is I was so happy when we didn't have to pay uh, Ma Bell ten thousand dollars to have one little line in the yellow pages. I know no one remembers that. I thought it was insane. Now I pay thirty thousand dollars in influence three uh, meet and greet and discovery influencer. Um, I'm going to call them cocktail parties. We have a social media company that we spend twenty four thousand dollars a year with, and I don't even know. You know, yes, likes, but is it uh, seats in the you know butts in my seats? I don't know. It's so yeah. hard to tell right now. Now you've got all these tentacles out there, all these mm -hmm. different directions with everything there. One of the things that I've seen over the years is you have built an incredible organization. Uh, you don't. I, it's. I know it. It sounds hard to believe, but Peter doesn't do all of this alone. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't do no. all this alone. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about how hard you've worked to put together an organization, where you've succeeded, where you've run into walls. Um, start up. I mean, start up by by your your core group. You know what? Let, let me just before I get into that, you hit. I think both of you hit on something. Yes, we have five divisions, but believe it or not. I learned the difference between wallet share and market share. My five companies have the same clients, by the way. That's wallet share. Um, so I just want more of your wallet for my restaurant. If it's lunch, happy hour, dinner, or bistros, that's my that's wallet share. But market share, I need you once a year to throw a barbecue for your family or for your company. Only once a year. All your holiday party, Cape Berry events can cater that. So it's it's a concept called the second kiss. I don't have a lot of clients. I don't want a lot of clients. The clients I have love a second bite at the apple through that. And the team of anywhere from director of catering who never says no, he does everything. And his team of event specialists, administrators, uh, even my handler. I have a couple handlers in the company that have authority to change my schedule, stop me from talking, excuse me out of meetings. Um, I'm good at certain things. I'm not great at all. And I hire to complement that. The team is so organized, so methodical. It's phenomenal. From, from the executive chef, I don't have a lot of input on the menu. I have input on categories. I have input on price points. But I'm not the chef. The, our, uh, our director of operations, which is purchasing everything that comes in and out. Um, 2019, we did over 1,000 events, 50 to 5,000 going in and out of our building. He's in charge. I don't tell him anything. I say, good morning. How are you today? How can I be of service to you? Yeah, but you are notorious for standing next to the dishwasher to see what didn't uh what wasn't eaten. So you certainly are involved in it before you beg off of that. You're certainly involved in that chain. Talk a little <laughs> bit about that. that I'm a little that embarrassed also. on that one. No, that, 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 is, that is the bellwether. That is, yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds signature. dumb, but 
you know, tell how smart hanging out with the dick. First of all, it's your, your base, your roots. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? If I'm assembling, organizing the dishes, I see what's coming in. I see the waiter. I see the back waiter. Um, and we call them back waiter, not bussers, not bus boys. I have incredible back waiters that are 40 years old that make $60,000 a year and they deserve this, the respect. So it's a back waiter. But how the waiters and back waiters treat, treat the dishwasher while I'm organizing, yeah, I'm watching. And they get it. It's mutual respect. The dishwasher, the sanitation engineer, turns and goes, boss, I got this. I said, it's okay. Just do the machine. I'll organize. Then for five minutes, I go wash my hands and I empty the dishwasher because it's a conveyor belt. Um, those things are phenomenal, by the way, but it does take two guys. Those little things, Fred and Larry, are huge. And the best part is, hey, what are you seeing come back? You know, are you seeing full entrees come back? If you are, watch. What waiter? What table? I asked the manager, did you know table 52 didn't eat these striped bass? Was there a problem? Don't laugh. This happened two days ago. It was a mistake that the waiter, so they just threw it away. Mm -hmm. The waiter didn't eat that night, by the way. I will tell you, I said, since you love throwing food away, don't worry about your meal tonight. I threw it away. How's that feel? The waiter looked at me and said, come on, we've talked about this. I don't get upset if you make a mistake. I get upset if you cover it up because I should have sent something to the customer, a little soup sipper, a mousse and bouche while everybody else is eating because it's rude that they're eating by themselves. You know, everybody else is eating and the one guy isn't. So yes, I, I am involved everywhere. I say hello, don't laugh. I bring coffee to the restaurant kitchen every day. The line is everybody laughs. If you can eat lunch and dinner, the culinary team should have coffee, tea, uh, um, lemon seltzer, seltzer. They should be drinking oh. all day long. If they don't, you don't need to eat for the rest of the day. I know. So that's go, a going, back to the, going back to the dishwasher, Peter, mm -hmm. tell people why you don't get a little cup of uh, coleslaw with your hamburger. It kills me. It's a cost factor. No one was eating it. I love coleslaw. I loved our coleslaw but no one was eating. It was an ego thing. The chef picked up on it. When I asked, we need to control cost. It's not about me. It's about my customer. And years ago, we, the perceived value was very, very important. Today, cost control is more important. Though I love our coleslaw, and Larry, you hit it right. We're the Great American Bar Barbecue Company. We actually make our own coleslaw, and it's incredible. But they weren't eating it. And... If they're not eating it, I can't put it on the plate. Looks good. I eat it, but uh, I, it's, it's embarrassing to say it's not about me. It's about the team. The culinary team is phenomenal. We've had turnover. Some people get it. Some people don't. I love the expression, though. Um, my mother taught me when I, when I was very, very upset and kind of depressed, I didn't get my first million dollar loan. I had the companies. I needed a new building, and I was turned down three times. She looks at me and goes, hmm, what'd you learn? Excuse me? What'd you learn? I learned no one wants to give me money. No, 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 no. Heavy accent, Cuban. She goes, no, no, no. You learn something. Or you're going to make the same mistake until you learn it. Like, you got to be kidding me. By the way, I learned that I didn't have a, I didn't know what EBITDA was. I took a crash course on EBITDA. I went from just having an application. I went back to the banks. And I asked, I'll buy you lunch. Just tell me why I wasn't a good fit for you. One of the three bankers had a meeting with me and turned me on to another banker. It took me nine banks to get my first million dollar loan, even though I own the building. I will tell you, I learned through that. If you're not looking for the no, why do you stop looking? You're looking for the yes. Keep looking and keep evolving and learning. That EBITDA lesson that I learned and the mark and the marketing and the co-branding and all that to this day is the foundation of our company. So it's, okay. you know, they, yeah. they say these bumps, what I've learned in COVID is, is a miracle. We've changed windows to make people feel comfortable. Uh, our boots are now five feet high because I'm not picking on anybody, but 
somewhere, somewhere in the world, somebody's going to cough, sneeze, something's going to happen again. And we need to make our customers comfortable. So I learned it. You know, I listen, I know I'm the dumbest guy in the road room. I'm okay. All I got is to go up. I keep learning and applying. So let's go back to the, um, to the pandemic. When most companies were wringing their hands and walking around in circles, what did you decide to do? We have an unfair advantage. This was our third world disaster, fourth national disaster. And I've seen this before, N not this flavor, but I've seen this before, brought everybody together. Listen, this is gonna be rough. This is gonna be rough. Get on the phone, talk to all your clients. Doesn't matter budget, what do they need? Call your hospitals, learn, let them vent to you. Within two weeks, we had a tractor trailer in our parking lot. We were serving six to 700 breakfasts, six to 700 lunches and six to 700 dinners. We turned our banquet hall that could hold 100 people into four assembly lines, cold assembly lines. We learned the protocol for dividing, the, the divide and conquer, the isolation. Um, so we were feeding all the staff of multiple hospitals, HSS, and what's the budget? Don't worry about it. Whatever your budget is, we're gonna blow your socks off. Um, we, I hate to say it, I've seen the recession before. We brought all our waiters together, talked to them, opened up the bar and happy hour. Everybody drank and ate. We hugged and kissed and I put everybody on unemployment. We had 238 staff members. I put 212 on unemployment. We were shut down. I don't think I ate or slept or kept something down or in probably for a week or two. I was. I can't imagine. It was the death of something that I worked on for 33 years. And people were crying and people were angry. But later they realized by putting them on unemployment right away, they got it. Their friends and family didn't get it for three to four months. Um, it was tough. It, it was tough and we did what we could and I used up all my personal savings, my home equity. I did everything. Thank God we live in an incredible country. It's not perfect. It may not be the greatest, but for me, it's great because the yep. ER, uh, uh, the employee retention PPP. credits, yep. yeah, were phenomenal. The PP, we used everything yep. to keep everybody yep. alive. Um, and as crazy as it seems, one of our clients was opening up a, a medical center. Well, you're going to open up the other cafe on time, right? I need a hundred thousand dollars for the equipment. We worked it out. We negotiated, you know, we, we, it was about solutions. Um, COVID was terrible, uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. There's so many people who didn't make it. Um, it was terrible. It, it, it was, but let's be honest. We're Americans. We learn, we adapt, we overcome. We do. And I, I think our industry is stronger than ever. Yeah, you know, we could use a little, an IV of some steroids or something, but we're working hard and smart. La you know, Larry, Fred, you guys know this better than I do. We opened up another cafe. We did renovations. People want to get out. They want to talk. Just open up the window. Um, our finances, we learned, um, it's a, not a plug for, but all the big companies have it. Every single menu item dressing package that we have is on a program called Studio. There's a thousand ones out, out there. It's actually free from our main provider. We've costed everything out in real time. I gotta tell you, it makes, a huge difference when you take a look at a recipe for overnight oats and you're like 50% of this recipe is soy milk. Are we nuts? Yeah. You know what? And we changed it. And I got to tell you, the food cost dropped by uh, 11% just on that one item. Um, we got rid of a bunch of 
there's no more ego things. You know, we like the 12 ounce plastic cup, the 14, the 16, the 20, the 24, the 32. We're down to four cups instead of seven. We're streamlining everything. We have to, and we're still not proud. And I think you said, I think you said to us a while ago that, that nothing goes on your menu unless you've costed the thing out in advance. That the, there's um, no. It's fun. yes. Plus that, that and everything is. Menu, Every item is used in four or five different recipes. Right. Exactly. No, there are no, you can bring something in for a week and it goes on a special, but it's out. And it better be a great deal in season, better be really exciting. I, I'm sorry, we have a barbecue company, an off premise catering company, an on premise catering company, a restaurant, and organic cafes. Those five divisions, there are stuff that doesn't translate well, but not a lot anymore. That yep. overnight oats don't laugh is everywhere. It's on the brunch menu, it's on the breakfast menu, it's on the lunch menu. It's difficult. Um, and some are roasted, some are you know with different things. We can't afford to have any losses and we can't have you know 2000 SKUs. So what is the, uh, so what is the Cisco conversation, the US foods conversation look like given with that as a, a plan? Oh, uh, I, I gotta tell you, 10 years ago, I was, I, I was fighting it. Now, I think they're the greatest things in the world. But understand, if you're really gonna be different, be different. Tell me what makes you, Fred, different. Oh, you have a costing, menu costing out app. Let me see it. Does it tie into my purchases? Excellent. Do I have, okay, we can all sign in, excellent. Uh, I'll make you laugh. So you say you're controlling cost. Can I get a delivery before eight o'clock in the morning? We get a delivery and it's on my phone now, 622. Do you wanna laugh? They don't go through the commissary anymore when there's 20 people. They go through right. and there's nobody there. Do you yep. know what the great thing is? Uh, there was a problem, credit. I mean, we used to have to go through a song and a dance to get a credit. No, it was Peter, a battle. Yep, it was a battle. Now, because they can make that delivery, and it's a two thousand to four thousand dollar delivery. They make it in fifteen minutes. It used to take them two hours to check everything in, get through the commissary. Not anymore. Fifteen to twenty minutes, they're out the door. Cold blanket goes on the freezer stuff. Cold blanket goes on the refrigerator yep. stuff. We're there two hours later putting everything away. It's phenomenal. So uh, whoever your vendor is, tell me how you're different because we're getting beat up by our customers. How are you different and better? So same thing, US Foods, Cisco, Chef's Warehouse. They're all fantastic by the way. But if you're only gonna use them for price and product, I think you're leaving 40% on the table. Explain. Explain that. Well, I, I think what he's saying, I think, Peter, what you're saying is we're so dependent now on technology and technology has such an ability to make us efficient that you've got to ask that vendor what they've got for technology in addition to what they actually have for food and beverage. Agreed. And I, I'm not gonna, I don't like what I'm about to say. I, I yeah. hate value added foods uh, because I think it's lazy and they don't taste as good as they should. That's just not true anymore. The value added, if it's raviolis, if it's a sauce, um, there's so many things that are really good now. You're gonna pay a little more, but you have to weigh out the labor, food, waste, time. Um, we're using products now that are so good we have to doctor them up a little bit the seasonings seasonings a little off we got to do a little this a little that but i got to tell you there's things that are phenomenal that are coming across if it's a pretzel if it's a sauce um we used to make our own barbecue sauce it's lengthy it's time you know it's a, they have some mm -hmm. great barbecue sauces out there and yes we do doctor them up but something that took all day to make that takes an hour to make now the labor went from, so, yeah. And I have you to talked about you. making your own, yeah. You talked about making your own sauce, and obviously there was an expense in 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 labor in doing that. 
all of a sudden we're in a world of 17 to $20 an hour dishwashers. What does, what's your approach to how you look at labor and the cost of labor and the increasing cost of labor moving forward as you try um, to operate, and try to, try to win? It starts with the conversation with your team. We have it on a regular basis. I don't think you're average. I don't want to pay you average. I don't want you working average. I don't want everybody. I want only the best. I'm going to treat you that way. And you're going to treat us that way and know what this is yep. about. This is about producing great food, looking good, tasting good, quick, fast, efficient. That makes you more valuable to the company across the board. I don't want everybody. We, we let people go. We warn people. Um, but a sanitation engineer or sanitation guys, they're phenomenal what they do. I think they're better than most of the, the prep cooks because they can multitask and do it well. But we've changed how we produce food, when we produce food, uh, a, a lot more overnight now, uh, very carefully. Um, the team knows if you waste time, I don't want you on the team. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Not everybody gets it. And at the end of the day, when they say, well, it's all about money. You come to work because I'm cute or I have a beard. It is about money. It's about blowing our customer socks off, wowing them. Okay. And making it reasonable so everybody can make money. It's up front. Everybody makes money. Now we do treat our staff. There's an employee breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We all eat together. As you heard before, I serve the kitchens, cappuccinos, coffees. I, in the kitchen, there's no glass. So we have the uh, quart containers or pint containers, uh, you know, the plexi ones, and we have ice, fresh lemon. Everybody drinks in our kitchen. We treat our staff with such respect and they laugh. They're like a uh, new guy, no coffee this morning. <laughs> so it's how there's a back waiter takes care of the kitchen. And we make them part of the kitchen because they're expediting and running food. Um, we call them the most important piece of the equipment, the back waiter, the food runner, the busser, whatever you want to call them. He's the most important. He's the kingpin. He touches the table, touches the waiters, touches the food, touches the kitchen. He touches everybody. So we all highly respect him. That respect, Fred, goes throughout the company. Um, turnover is expensive, but a bad apple is a bad apple i'd rather be yep. down one than dealing with somebody with the bad apple having the wrong yeah it's well, tough but you gotta get you gotta get rid of i'm gonna say we're gonna get rid of 10 to 20 percent of our positions yep. moving forward and have to automate them if it's a conveyor belt dishwasher if it's a spray if it's something automatic you know whatever it is or like i said getting a delivery between six and seven so we're actually, it's all automated. When we come in, everything's waiting for us. There's so many things that you can do. The Robo, uh, the R50 is phenomenal for chopping and dicing. You know, it's, we're going to have to go there. Uh, okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Listen, time is our enemy. Time yes, is our is. enemy when it comes with this. So Peter, um, first of all, just going to open it up to the uh, to the 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 audience has been very quiet today. Uh, are there any questions for Peter? Because we're running out of time. Uh, okay, I guess you've covered it all, Peter. So listen, Peter, just give me one pearl of wisdom, something to put in the people that's going to. That are listening right now, or the people going to watch this video later on, something that they will think about and can uh, maybe help them out over through a problem in the, in the near future. I would say the two things that have served me the best in all the hard times that we've gone through as a company really is, and Fred said it, that constant learning, that constant exploring it's another um it's another arrow in your armament just keep learning keep learn anything that you can learn that you may be able to apply to your business but 
don't chase customers that are not yours. Chase the customers and serve the customers that you have. My customer, Montefiore, I, I used to do barbecues and catering for them. I, they were building a new building. I introduced them, the president to the vice president, Regeneron. I serve my clients with the knowledge that I keep getting. And I keep, yes, Fred, I get excited. I want new skills, so I'm faster, better, but I serve my clients. I introduce my clients. How can I be of service? I don't charge them. I didn't charge Montefiore. I gave them a hundred hours of my work, two hours a week for a year, free. They said, well, you can send us a bill. So I'll make you a deal. It's $200 an hour. I'm going to send you a bill, stamp it, donate it. And they looked at me because why would you do that? You serve the greater good, I serve you. Do we understand our relationship? Yeah. Don't serve the greater good, I don't serve you. Don't laugh. We have three cafes, a multi-million dollar contract. I'm embarrassed to say it's a year-to-year -year contract <laughs> My, because I was the consultant. If I don't do the job, I get thrown out, 90-day notice. They could not understand it. You really stand behind what you do. Of course I do. So keep learning, but take care of your clients. I, I love the expression, the second kiss. I started dating my wife a hundred years ago. And that first kiss was really, do I, don't I, when, don't I, after the first kiss, the second kiss was easy. I'm good. Love it. My, my clients, I have second and third hugs, kisses, handshakes, whatever is appropriate today. And I apologize. I'm Cuban. It's a kiss. It's a hug and a kiss. That second kiss to my clients because I'm a wealth of knowledge and hospitality has served me incredibly well. I don't know when I'm going to get to first base with you, Peter. I mean, <laughs> I've known you many years and I've never been kissed, but um, I do enjoy Metaphor. going to the restaurant. And by the way, for those who are listening, um, I have three granddaughters who are horrible in a restaurant. They jump all over the place. They're not interested no, they're not. in anything. Wait, wait, they go to Peter's place. All they do is eat because they love his food. Now, he's, they're taking care of 70-year-olds and a four-year-old, and everybody is intent on what's going on at the table. And it's just a great experience. So stop by Sam's of Gedney Way when you get a chance. And uh, Peter, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've been an all-star for the virtual breakfast session. You've helped us out many times. And then today, I think you'll be helping out many people with uh, the, the show, the recording, and what goes on after. Uh, and uh, well, folks, look for us in two weeks. We'll be back again. And, and if you want to see this episode or any of our earlier episodes, you can go to two places, totalfood.com slash VBS slash, or go see us on YouTube, type in virtual breakfast sessions. And there is a library. This is number 37. It'll be up within a week. Uh, there's a library of our past episodes. So, Peter, thank you very much. Fred, do you have any last words to say before we say goodbye? Just, uh, just thank, thank you for sharing one of the one of the really great minds in our business. Thank you so much, Peter. My okay. pleasure and my honor. Great. So, folks, like I said, hope to see you again in two weeks. And until then, hey, everybody, stay positive, test negative. See you in two weeks, folks. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Take care now. Thank you. Bye now.